The Outspot Show is a brand new talk show by and for millennials. We aim to share our perspectives on news, trending topics, and entertainment. We show recognition to entrepreneurs and those in the arts, and we give our viewers an inside look of what's happening within our community. Welcome to the L Spot Show. I'm your host, Jessica Lanise. Today's show is all about cuffing season. We will have our guest panelist, Trevor Mason, who is a contributing writer to the Elspot.com, and rapper Cam and Jay, who will be joining us to give their perspectives on this cuffing season. Next, our reporter Amanda Sherry will be giving us a special treat for Valentine's Day. Then we will get to know more about Cameron J and his latest project, MSDL3. But first, let's go to my co-host Camille J to see what's trending in Cuffin Season. Cuffin Season isn't a new trend millennials invented. Its concept has been traced back to years ago in our evolutionary history. Dr. Wendy Walsh, a clinical psychologist who specializes in the psychology of love, sex, and gender roles, studied and concluded that in our past, there was less food and resources available, and hunter-gatherer survival happened better if you were in a pack. If you were, you know, coupled up. So think back to your high school science class. Remember learning about Charles Darwin's classic theory, the survival of the fittest? According to Darwin, individuals with maladaptive behaviors, like walking around alone in the dead of winter, were less likely to survive in the cold and have kids, so their genes didn't pass on to the next generation. Meanwhile, people who coupled up in the winter had better survival rates and as a result, had more babies than single people did. And there you have it, the birth of cuffin season. What's different about it now is that instead of trying to reproduce, we're trying to do the exact opposite. We want to find someone just to occupy our time for a short while and then go back into the free and uncuffed wild. Which brings us to our next subject. Does cuffing season prepare us for committed relationships or help us avoid them? I know there's rules to the whole cuffing season thing, like not spending too much time together or getting too comfortable, but isn't that the point? As millennials, are we afraid to commit or just too lazy to put the real work in? Let's head over to our panelists so we could figure this whole cuffing season thing out. Thank you, Camille. These are some interesting trends about cuffing season, especially about how it all began. I'm curious to hear from our panelists, Trevor Mason, who is single ladies, and Cameron Jay, who is in a relationship. We will be getting to hear from both perspectives about cuffing season. So first, guys, what do you think about the evolution of Coven Season from it being a way to survive and re reproduce to now just making sure you're not lonely for the season? I mean, back in the day, it was really necessary just for survival. Now it's, it's necessary to survive to be warm for the winter. <laughs> you know, it's, um, it, it gets cold, especially uh, in New York City here along the East Coast. So it's, it's nice to have somebody to cut up with, cuddle up with uh, during the wintertime. Um, some days before, it just went from, all right, I mean, this could build to a relationship, something long lasting. Now it's just, I need somebody to take pictures with on Instagram, Snapchat <laughs> for, for the season, and want to tell these girls I'll be back around June. <laughs> so, do you not think that it does lead to building relationships still, it's, or it, it depends on the person? Like, it depends on y'all connection. Like, there's certain times y'all can actually connect, and it leads to more, or you just might be like, all right. Summertime, but it go out there again. <laughs> you don't need to anymore. I mean, it could absolutely lead to more as uh -huh. long as everybody's like on the same page. Communication is key. You know, expressing what everybody wants is key. Um, there's always going to be somebody who wants more than the other. So as long as everybody's on the same page, it could progress. Or you know, like Cam said, you know, back to the beach. Right. I look at it as a um, seasonal job. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> okay, so. Off camera, we were saying that how there's different levels to cuffing season. So I guess really quick, each of you guys say what your version of cuffing season is. Oh, like right now, I'm like seriously cuffed, like <laughs> locked out. Yes, I got an ankle bracelet and all. <laughs> um, and then there's I I'll holler when I see you. Maybe after I leave this party, I might pick you up and we the go late home. Night thing. Yeah, the late night. <laughs> it's snowing outside. Come through. <laughs> okay, and Trevor? Well, for me, it's it's more of a, you know, finding a person that is that I can talk to, have fun with, um, hang out with probably two or three times a week. Um, you know, it, it's, it's tough to meet people now, you know, especially it, when everybody has a career, everybody's moving and shaking. So 
Uh, for me, it's uh, just finding somebody good that hopefully can progress, progress into something, you know, past the winter, uh, you know, into May in the spring. <laughs> so uh, it's, you know, it, like I said, like Cam said, it all depends on the person. If the person's great, you know, we, we have our time, we have fun. If they're amazing, then um, we see where it can go. Right, Camille? Um, for me, cuffing season has a purpose. Like, I'm trying to find the solid, the one that's going to stay for the year. Um, and it worked for me last year. I was in the draft, I guess, and, <laughs> you know, I had some perspectives lined up, but I settled down with the one. Um, so, yeah, it worked for me. Cuffing season worked. <laughs> okay, I guess for me, same thing like what you're saying and Trevor said, like you're just pretty much finding someone to build with. But right now, I think I'm a little curious of just seeing how like actual just season, okay, we're done. See you next time. Yeah. I don't know. Free I just want to try. Yeah, free like, yeah, free agency. <laughs> like some people do that though. They just want to test out different things. They want to see find out what they like and mm -hmm. find out more about themselves. So they test out this for a couple of months and then test out something else for I a mean, couple of months. I mean it's also a good way to know what you find out what you like and what you don't like. Exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. So do you think that there should be certain qualities in finding a partner for a cup and season, even if it's just for a season? Uh first mm -hmm. off, of course, communication being on the same page. Second, um, you know, everybody's busy, everybody has a job. You really don't want to sacrifice too much of your time for somebody that you don't feel like is going to be around that long. So, you know, if I have to go to work, I'm not going to be late. So, um, like, if you're, like, in and out like a robbery. You know, like, <laughs> if we're going to hang out, we're going to hang out for 45 minutes. On the 44th minute, you know, I'm, you know, checking my car keys, and I'm, you know, headed back to where I need to be. Uh, and like I said, just being on the same page. No expectations. Um, no commingling of the friends of the, f especially the family. You know, mm. if you meet moms in the mall accidentally, that's one thing. But mm. you know, other than that, it, it's you know, it, it's between the two people, and that's where, for the most part, it should stay. Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely, the family thing is a major thing. No, co meeting family, but uh, there's some things y'all both need to have. Like, shouldn't be paying for cabs all the time. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you need um, to have funds. Yeah, funds. have some type of. Fun, so you can come over. We can pay for food together. Right. Um, Equal. Yeah. Split it. Yeah. Split the relationship. Yeah. I was watching something on Instagram. This guy, he was, he said, "Uh, hey, is, um, so how was our first date?" She goes, "This is not a date. I thought we was here as friends." And he goes, oh, I, saw, I that. saw that." He goes, "Uh, can you please uh split this check? Yeah. I don't do all this for friends." Yeah. <laughs> That's true. You definitely have to split um, because you don't want one person to be doing more than the other person. Then it actually starts feeling like a relationship, like you're taking care of the person. And right mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. you're not at that level yet. Um, so that's, I, I agree. I definitely think you should be able to have fun with the person. Like Absolutely. if this is the person that you're going to be hanging out with, spending nights together or trapped in from the snowstorms, then you have to be able to have fun. Um, and I think that you guys should be able to at least be friends. Like, they should definitely be your friend. Like, you guys could chill, talk about different things, have similar interests, or have opposing interests where you could talk about them. I mean, you know, build a friendship. Okay, so do you think there should be rules to, to this? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely, there's rules. There's totally different rules than, like, being in a relationship. Like, there's yeah. relationship rules, and then there's cuffing season. You're, like, a prospect. And, yeah, you have to follow those rules because then you get trapped or lost feelings could get hurt or yeah. yeah you gotta follow those rules man. I think I would I'd compare it to like scouting somebody for a college basketball team you can do <laughs> certain things you can go to the games watch them play but you can't give them you know special gifts can't give them sneakers like yeah. different contracts they can't get an agent yeah. so you just follow those rules or else they're violations and you know <laughs> you could be out of the tournament like for the summer or something like that yeah. just like some sort of suspension <laughs> if you break these NCAA rules these cuffing rules yeah. that's funny Let's go through the rules. Okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we found actually a list of cuff and season commandments from Madame Noir. Um, so I guess let's go through. The first one is cuff, don't get cuffed. So you should be the one cuffing. If you're not doing the cuffing, then you're being cuffed, which means you're not in control. Do you think that, like, who should do the cuffing? Should it be the girls? Should it be the guys? Or does it really not matter? I think go after what you want. I don't I think, think it. I think it should be a team thing, though. <laughs> I think y'all should have it both set up. All right, this is what I want. What is it that you want? So it's out on the table. Yeah, and then agree to cuff together. Yeah. <laughs> like, 
I mean, I'm, I'm fine whoever I'm cuffing with making them feel like they're in control. Making them feel like they're yeah. in control. <laughs> it's fine. Okay, so what about um, the amount of time spending with them? Like two nights only, That's well, two nights max per week. Yeah. I say two to three. Two to three. three. Two yeah. to three. You, might, you might have an extra snowstorm and you might have to, you know, add an extra day. Mm -hmm. But like you were saying, stick to the time. Like if I'm going to see you for this amount of yes. time, then this is what it is. Even if you're like at work feeling a little lonely or at home feeling a little lonely, like you can't do it. You can't break the rules. Play mad and go to the gym, do something else. Yeah. <laughs> As needed. <laughs> and one more. So what about how much time should the person give it up? Pretty much, should there be a rule to cuffing season? Like, is it known that you're gonna give it up within a certain time frame? Cause like, it says don't wait six months, but don't wait, don't give it up too quick. Like, um, what from the guy's perspective, and then I guess we'll give our perspective. When I was younger, um, from after Halloween, I would not talk to anybody until after February. Just so I don't have to give you a Valentine's Day. So I don't have to give you a Christmas gift. I don't have to see your family for Thanksgiving. No Valentine's Day gift. See me back in March. That's now, so shady. But now it's like uh, you kind of don't want to spend too much time with because you don't want to have to end up getting a gift. You don't want to do Valentine's Day sometimes. I think you can do little gifts. It doesn't have to be like the rules. Again, we're in a. Uh, a cuffing season so we're not like in a full relationship so I could get you something small or we could like go out I don't have to buy you like a PlayStation or a Madden or whatever the thing Yo, is Madden only $60 oh like. I said a Madden too like <laughs> all right guys so cuffing season you know we're either excited or dreading this time frame but first let's go to let's get a lovey-dovey and I'm here from our reporter, Amantha Sherry, who will be giving us a scoop of what's happening for Valentine's Day this season. Hey guys, I'm Amantha Sherry with the L Spot Show. Love is in the air with Valentine's Day just a few days away. Many of you may have your plans already set, but I'm here to give you some ideas on how to make this day memorable. Making reservations and buying materialistic items is just an easy way out to me. Here's on how you can make it personal. With setting the mood, you can buy his or her favorite flowers, candy, or chocolates. Anything that makes you think of your significant other. Instead of planning a night out, preparing a night in can be just as special. Decorating your place with rose petals and candles, setting the tone for a night of romance, cooking his or her favorite meal, and listening to songs that reflect the love you have for one another can go a long way. And if you do plan on going out that day, make sure you engage in activities and events you both can enjoy, like a show or a concert, where you both can interact with each other, like a day trip, a ski date, or a sip and paint. Things that are hands-on can be fun, too. Sentimental gifts are always a plus, like a love letter. You can write your significant other a letter of endearment, rip it up into 14 pieces, each day give them a piece, and on Valentine's Day, they'll put it together like a puzzle. But since Valentine's Day is right around the corner, you can do a scavenger hunt where they get all the different pieces, put it together, and they'll be able to see all the lovely words that you had to say about them. For a guy, you can make a sock bouquet. Get him some comfy socks, roll them up into a shape of a rose, and create a bouquet. To spice it up, you can add many bottles of liquor in each roll. Personalized items are great too, like a bracelet, necklace, robe, or onesie. Something he or she may love and use. Something sentimental or when in doubt, something here she always wanted and often spoke about. This is a day where we all come together to celebrate love and appreciation. No worries if you're single, you can spend time with your family and friends. It's all about spreading love today. Hope my ideas were helpful. Enjoy Valentine's Day. Camille and Jessica, back to you in the studio. Earlier, we had Cameron J on as a guest for our Cuffin Season segment, and now he's back so we could get to know him as an artist. So you're on our Cuffin Season segment, you're on this segment, your name is Cameron J. Like, you're just really trying to take over here. Yeah, I'm coming for your spot. <laughs> I'm taking your job soon. <laughs> he may be permanently here, guys. You can't have two Cam J's on the show. <laughs> One of us has got to go. <laughs> no, but thank you for joining us thank today. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Great. Awesome. I know you have some new stuff coming out. Your project MSDL3. Yes. So um, definitely tell us a little bit about that. How's it going? What does it even stand for? MSDL3 stands for Money, Sex, Drugs, and Liquor 3. 
Um, it's produced by Amidi on the Beats. I have a couple features that are major out there. Um, it's one of my favorite projects out of all the three of them. Um, putting a lot of work into this one. I'm getting a very positive response about the music. So we just released a video, FWU, featuring True Vocals. Um, that's getting positive feedback. So just keep moving right now. Working on a new project coming soon. Okay, so before we really get more into details about your project, because I have some fun stuff for you. Okay. Tell me, like, some of your successes and failures as an artist. Some of the successes as an artist. Um, named one of the top artists at a showcase where I opened up for Trina. Mm -hmm. And um, the prize for that was playing my music on Hot 97 for a commercial. Nice. That's cool. Um, being um, one of the top 50 indie artists on Coast to Coast Mixtape, that was big for me. Congrats. Yeah. Being on this show. Awesome. That's big for me. <laughs> okay, so tell us like uh, some failures that, of course, it may have led to successes, but like, what were some of your struggles as far as pursuing your um, dream? Sometimes it's, it, it gets to become a struggle, um, forcing people to come out with you mm -hmm. to some of these shows. Everybody's like some of the shows be during the week. People got to work. Right. Um, time in the year. Some people are broke. Right. Um, so that could be a struggle after a while. Um, sometimes it's just you get frustrated when nobody's. You feel like you made a hot song and nobody's gravitating towards it, or it takes media forever to respond to it, or right. the public to respond to it. So that can be like a struggle as an artist, especially if you're funding and doing everything yourself. Right. Do you prefer to be signed to a label or are you like, do you feel like it's worth it, you know, doing this on your own? Um, I see both, the positive and negative. Definitely everybody wants to spend everybody else's money, so why <laughs> spend yours? But um, I also see the investment into it, like the return you get back from investing in yourself knowing that you put your all into this and now you get all the accolades, all the money, all the the return comes back to you. So that's also a great feeling too. Right. So now let's get back to MSDL3. We want to know how well you know your song. So what I'm okay. going to do is say some of the lyrics okay. and you have to tell me what song okay. it's from. Okay. So the first one is, when the smoke is clear, I'd be at the top. But it gets your shine before this album drop. The summer sun got these niggas shut. You gotta say a word, all I do is luck. So, it's, the, it's doing me. Okay. <laughs> Get this money, any means, that's just all we know. Step up in the way of paper, it's your funeral. East Coast, West Coast, got it all locked. <laughs> what song? <laughs> um, you have it, you finished the rest of it, but what's the song? On Everything. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We in that spaceship, we look like some Martians. This hair Maybach's is that boss. and Benzes. Dang, I can't even finish it. Okay, okay. Girl, you had a long day. Come here, let me stroke you, give you some of this 12 play. FWU. Awesome. Okay, so you do know your song. That's great. All right. So the last one was FWU, which is your current single out right now. Yes. Tell me more about this song. Well, I got the beat from M80. I'm listening to it, I'm listening to it. I'm like, you know what? I just did this song with this artist, True Vocals. We're saying we need to work again. Let me send it to him. Mm -hmm. I send it to him. Two days later, I get an email back. Yo, check your email. I text back, check your email. I check my email. He laid an amazing hook. I wrote it out. Between that day and the next day, wrote it out. Called M80. Yo, I gotta record this. Recorded it. The song sounds phenomenal. So then... I was like, you know what, naturally, I got to do the video for this. Mm -hmm. So, called my man Eli, he put everything together, I had some great help with the treatment, <laughs> and then um, we shot out in Osney, New York, in the freezing cold, mm -hmm. we shot in Red Hook, Brooklyn, Nice. and now the video's out, we're getting a lot of positive feedback about the song, so. All right, so we're actually going to show the video today. Yeah. Before we get into the video, tell everybody what's coming up next for Cam and Jay. Well, we got a new project I'm working on right now, coming soon. 
Um, probably going to release a couple more videos from MSDL3. Mm -hmm. Keep up the promotion with that. And uh, be sure to see me every, all over the place. Okay, tell everybody where they can find you. You can find me on everything. That's Instagram, Facebook, um, Twitter, Cameron J Music. That's C-A-M-E-R-O-N-J-A-Y-M-U-S-I-K. You can even hit me up on CameronJMusic.com. And uh, keep in touch with me. I'm definitely out there. Awesome. So, guys, we're going to go into Cameron J's music video, FWU, featuring True Vocals. Girl, you got me out of my mind Ain't never seen one like you I'm trying to give you all of my time So tell me what I gotta do And you should be I With you With you, shorty, I'm with you With you with you, shorty, I'm with you Though you got me out of my mind you never seen one like you I'm trying to give you all of my time So tell me what I gotta do Shorty, I'm with you With you, shorty, I'm with you I put you the long way, girl. You had a long day. Come here, let me stroke you, give you some more of this 12 play. You got your dreams, I can see that boot. Not trying to rush, just need some time with you. Now the day goes by, you don't cross this brain. Get you in this coupe, have you switching lanes. Tell me what I gotta do. Just to spend tonight with you Show you to the world Ain't no secrets, ain't no hiding you Ain't, ain't no hiding you I can see us girls Staying up all night Then we take a trip Girl, let's take a flight Yeah, I've done some things And I changed, that's true Give you all my love Cause I'm with you Girl, you got me out of my mind Never seen one like you I'm trying to give you all of my time So tell me what I gotta do Shorty, I With you With you, shorty, I'm with you With you With you, shorty, I'm Trying to f with you, maybe show you things, get you going, boo. Have another sip, get you comfortable. I don't mind the wait, cause you worth my time. Been a couple months, gotta make you mine. I don't f with most, but I need your love. Kissing on your skin is like my favorite drug. How we make it here, love and ecstasy. Peach you from afar, but right now I need you next to me. Right, 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 right now, I need you next to me. Bathtub, thumb pedals in it. Your love's like a new beginning. Sure enough, gonna work that thing. Day and night, got you on my brain. Fall asleep, then we go again. Make sure the neighbors know my name. All these things I do for you, just to show that I f with you. Girl, you got me out of my mind. Never seen one like you. Trying to give you all of my time So tell me what I gotta do Shorty, I'm with you With you, shorty, I'm with you With you With you, shorty, I'm with you Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three, three, three. 
I know what y'all been waiting for. And 80 on the beat. Roll some, smoke some. Roll up, drink some. Roll up, smoke one. Baby, let's get high tonight. Drunk tonight. You know? Roll one, smoke one. Baby, let's get high tonight. Uh-huh. Roll up, drinks. Well, this is it for today, everyone. We most definitely had some fun learning the commandments of cup and season and getting insight from our guest panelists, Trevor Mason and Cameron J. And our reporter, Amantha Sherry, shared with us some fun stuff for Valentine's Day. Also, we got to know more about Cameron J and watch his music video, FWU, featuring true vocals. To stay updated with our show, our guests, and the hosts, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at The L Spot Show. We'd like to say thank you to our production team. You all are the greatest. To our viewers, thank you for watching, and make sure you too network and be recognized. See you next week. Bye. And 80 on the beat!